Hi, everyone. It's Dr. Keenan, and I'm very happy to be here today with Danielle Miller from Bermuda. How's it going, Danielle? Great. Thank you. How are you? Wonderful. And thanks for joining us today. So, Danielle, can you tell us a little bit about the work that you do and how you've been coping during this uh, pandemic? Absolutely. So I'm a chiropractic doctor. I work at a practice here in Bermuda. It's called Advanced Chiropractic Wellness Center. I've been living and working in Bermuda for the past seven, almost eight years, actually. I uh, grew and, uh, up and was educated in Canada. And I've, I've practiced in several, several years, uh, oh, sorry, several countries <laughs> um, across about 12 years. Um, from Canada to um, different countries in Africa, China, and now Bermuda. And uh, so now living and working here with my husband. And um, we have been really being essential workers here, even through our stay at home orders in Bermuda. Uh, we've been actually quite busy at the practice. So we're seeing a lot. Uh, and some of the things we're seeing uh, have been changing uh, based on everybody working from home, staying at home based on the different demands that this pandemic has, uh, has brought to light. So I think uh, we'll talk a little bit about that together, I guess, right? Sure. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, I've seen that in family practice as well as, you know, even though we may not have the impacts of other illnesses, there's things that are coming up that, you know, are related to basically functional problems like sitting at home in front of computers and televisions. So um, yeah, so tell us more and then how you kind of, what guidance you give patients on these sorts of things. Sure. So because those demands have changed, as you said, Dr. Keenan, uh, we have a lot of our people working from home. At actually currently in Bermuda, we're on a stay at home order. So everybody that can work from home is working from home. Uh, and our kids are being schooled from home. So even if we're doing child care, we're at home with our children at, you know, weird contorted positions and postures and trying to do schooling from home. So I thought today I could talk about um, some of the things that have changed or, or some of the injuries or issues that have increased since uh, we first started this whole pandemic and maybe a couple things to mitigate those those increases. So the first thing I thought I would talk about were uh, ergonomics, as you mentioned. So we talk about ergonomics, we're talking about the position of your body when you're doing of your body and your workspace when you're doing your work. So that is that means the position of you know everything from where your feet are placed to your knees to your you know all of your joints where your computers um, placed your chair everything. So I have a little uh, picture for you. I thought that we could kind of uh, add it as an attachment or something for people because I think it's really wonderful to have visuals with this type of thing. But I'll talk through it in a couple of steps just so I can um, draw to that. And then I thought I could I could uh, offer that for everybody if they wanted it. So I like to start from the bottom down. So at just a quick here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Bottom down. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, your feet, you basically want your feet to be, um, you want them to be touching the ground. So you don't want them to be floating or flying. And if we're being really particular, you know, you can have a little bit of an incline, a little bit of an angle on your feet if you'd like. So, um, you know, in the literature, they, they talk about zero to, you know, 15 degrees of an incline. So uh, you, you can't see my feet right now, but that would be like, you know, they're like this, just propped up ever so slightly. Okay. Um, then I like to move up to my knees and you want your knees to be at about a 90 degree angle. You know, so you don't want your legs like sprawled out and you don't necessarily want them flexed really far under you. Around a 90 degree is really nice and, and puts the least amount of load on your knee joint. Okay. And then next we move up to our hips and our hips, we also want to be at about 90 degrees. So that again means, you know, right at the junction of where your hip and your low back meet, you want that right angle. So in order to achieve that, you want to really kind of scoot yourself to the back of your chair. And um, that's, and hopefully you're on a chair. And I know life is life. So sometimes we're on a couch, uh, but something that's a little firmer is going to be more supportive. 
If all you have is a kitchen chair, then that's great. We work with that. But if you can get a hand of your ergonomic chair from work or something, then that's also gonna be really helpful. But you scoot your hips right to the back of your chair. And then um, ideally you'd like your back pressed against something. Some of the more ergonomic chairs have this little out pouching part of, um, in, the, in the low back in the lumbar region that presses against your spine. If you don't have something so fancy, you can just take you know, a rolled up towel or a thin cushion and put it right in the small of your low back. So that pressure against your low back creates a little bit of support for your spine and it will keep you in those positions a little longer. It'll allow your hips to be at 90, okay? Then moving up the chain, we talk about elbows and our hands. So you want your elbows to be kind of, I wonder if I can scooch back so you could see me a little bit better. <laughs> But you, know, you don't want your elbows where you're lifting and reaching up high. You know, you kind of want your elbows so they're at about a 90, resting at your side with your arms in front of you, okay? So that's gonna adjust where you put your laptop or where you put your things that you're working with. So you don't wanna be reaching here, you don't wanna be all the way back here. Um, and then moving up again up the chain, you want to be mindful of obviously where your shoulders are. So if your elbows are elevated on your you know, arm rests, then your shoulders are going to be up here. That's going to put a lot of load on your, on your neck. So you want your, your, your shoulders to be down and your arms to be relaxed at your side. And is it best to have a chair with arms? I often think about that. That's a good question. It depends. It's a hard question because it really depends. For example, um, if, if your arms, the most important thing is that your arms, you know, your, your arms are relaxed and by your side. So if you don't, if you're doing a lot of reading, uh, arms on their, your chair is probably perfect because you're just relaxed and you can maybe scroll with your finger on your mouse. If you're doing a lot of typing, then as long as your arms can fit under your desk, does that make sense? So you're sliding yourself in and your body can then be propped and relaxed on your desk while you're doing your typing. So I feel like it really depends on the demands of what you're doing. Uh, so, but if it, it, as long, if they're adjustable, that's great, you know, cause you can kind of get them out of the way. <clears throat> so next with your, so elbows at 90, you want your shoulders. You don't want them up to your ears. I'm going to tie my hair back so you can see my shoulders when I demonstrate. Um, you, you want, you don't want here, you want this, right? And then your neck really importantly you want your spine, again, same as your low back in neutral. So that means you don't want, when I'm sitting to my side, you don't want this and you don't want this, right? I'm obviously exaggerating these postures, but what you want, so basically your eyes will gaze, depending on how far your monitor is away from you, your eyes will gaze 20 to 50 degrees as sort of downward. And you want that nice, relaxed, Posture. I hope I'm doing it right. It's wonderful. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is hard. Yeah. The, <laughs> it is hard without the visual feedback. So don't be afraid to have somebody check your ergonomic position for you. Because it's also hard to look in a mirror from the side and you know turn your head. So that's the ideal. Um, so again, you don't really need fancy things for this, but using a few things like maybe using like a pillow like we said or lowering your armrests if you can so you can get a little bit closer to your computer um, would be ideal um, and lastly you know you obviously you want your head in neutral you don't want flexion or extension in your cervical spine you also want your your station right in front of you so you don't want to be you know like this or like this, if you can avoid it. <laughs> or if you must be turned to your side, at least turn to your side half the day and then the other half the day, maybe move your monitor so that you can get some balance of load in through your spine. So having your head looking straight is obviously ideal when you can. Um, if you're on a laptop, another tip I've given patients is that if you could get an external keyboard you can often find them for not very expensive and plug them into your laptop so that you can prop your laptop up because in the laptop with the monitor being connected to the keyboard either keeps us here or here right 
So if you can have a little adjustment like that, you may over the hours that you're doing, whatever you're doing, see a decrease in, in your discomfort, your pain. It's so wonderful that you bring this up, Danielle, because I see it all the time too. Oh, and, right. and even in our own offices, you know, we have our computers so that they're at eye level. And um, it's been something for me to learn at home because I, I just, I still have, even though I work, I'm still at home more than before. Absolutely. And I did go and buy an adjustable chair because my back was hurting so much on the kitchen chair. So absolutely, it doesn't take long, a couple of weeks getting into these positions and then your body starts to, to speak to yeah, you. Absolutely, and I, just to speak to that point, I, you know, I think, I don't think any of us really recognized or, or had any idea of what we were in for with this last year of pandemic. So we have, I have a bunch of patients who have gone home and, and they were in really awkward workspaces thinking that this was going to be a day or a week, you know, and it turns out two months later and they're still propped and slumped on their couch, on their laptop and wondering, okay, why can't I move my neck right now? You know, <laughs> so it's the situation we find ourselves in, but I like that little re uh, reminder and I like this little graphic that I send to people. So I will uh, include that for everybody. Yeah. So do you want me to go on to the next? That was number one. <laughs> do we have time? We have time for number three. Okay. So the next thing I like to talk to people about is about movement. Now, I know this is something that all of us are huge proponents of. We understand that we're not moving uh, as much as we were when we were just doing things. Um, particularly movement that I want to address is just, again, that, that getting up um, frequently from your workspace. So uh, whether you're with your children again and you're helping them and they are doing their study from home or you're working at home, the literature shows us that if we get up every 20 to 30 minutes, uh, we can, we really reset the load on our spine. So there's a phenomenon called creep that happens over time where the joints of our spine, our disc joints, they slowly kind of lose their hydration and smush under just the static load of the weight of our body in a seated position. So all we have to do is get up and you know, you know, move for a couple seconds and it doesn't have to be a long period of time. And what happens is you reset that creep phenomenon. You reset those, the hydration in those joints all the way through your spine and you, you will be in a better place at the end of the day. So, which is really interesting. It's something that I, I really, I, I didn't learn it until I was studying in my chiropractic school, really. And yeah, and like I, I knew that I had to move and what my little trick is I'll put the reminder on my, on my computer to go off every hour, at least as a minimum, um, because you definitely can get carried away and you're sitting for a long period and you don't know until you go to stand and I've had back surgery. So as I go to stand, I'm like, oh, I'm like really slow. <laughs> I'm stuck. Exactly. I can't move. <laughs> yeah. I need a second. Exactly. Precisely. So I think that's a great, uh, a great uh, tip, Dr. Keenan, because that's one of the, the, um, the suggestions I have for the patients that I see as well. So I, a couple of ones I like, uh, the, the reminder. So I tell them every 30 minutes, have an alarm go off on their watch or on their computer. I do notice quite a few of my patients these days have uh, wrist watches that, that do that for them automatically. Like the Apple watches, I believe. Um, and so the, that'll, they'll just vibrate to just give them a reminder. And all you have to do is just stand up. You don't have to take five minutes even. Just stand up, shift the load on your body, and you can sit right back down. So that's one of them that I really love. The, the second one I really love is just having a big, like, container of water sat right beside you. And so when you're going and you're typing away, you're working away, and you're drinking your water as you are, and inevitably, you're going to be up to use the restroom probably every, you know, 30 minutes or so, as, especially if you're really being good about it. And, and in that way, you're also making sure you're hydrated as well. So uh, that one is a great one. I know I'm up every 20 to 30 minutes because of how much water I'm drinking. So, so that alone will help so that at the end of the day, you're experiencing less discomfort, less low back pain, less neck pain, some of those postural issues. Um, so yeah, that, that was really the second tip I have, just that movement. 
Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we know too, from just moving, you know, cause I talk a lot about weight loss and you know, the more we even stand, uh, because when we sit, we don't activate some of our enzymes that are responsible to get our muscles kind of woken up again. And just that aspect of movement can help you burn more energy, even just a quick stand. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's really fascinating. There's a, there's so much value in it, you know, from the mechanical side that I get to work with to, you know, more of the internal mechanical side <laughs> that you get to work with. It's, it's so important. And of course, there's a whole tangent of exercise and, and movement movement that I'm sure will be addressed at some point by somebody. We all know that that's important, but I thought I would just keep mine really nice and concise for us. <laughs> so lastly, I wanted to talk about a couple stretches because, because we're in uh, these postures so often, these seated postures, these more sedentary postures, I thought I could give my three best stretches that really, really help um, again, reset some of the load and the tension that happens on the postural muscles that are overloaded as we're seated. So the first one I thought I would talk about, again, those muscles that I talked about before that are often, they often like to be up here, um, where they should be down here. <laughs> those are, that's the, the upper fibers of our trapezius muscle, actually. Uh, the trapezius muscle is, is really a dominant one and overworked in postural strain. So, um, a stretch that I like to do for it. it's really simple. Just take your head to the side. You can take one hand and place it on, on top of the other side of your head. And then really just think about the opposing shoulder, allow it to depress. So allow that to really come down. And if you play around with the ankle of your chin, you might find that there's a place that there's, you feel more of a stretch for you. And you just will hold. And the important thing with stretching is that you hold for 30 seconds. In the literature, we see that if we don't hold these stretches for, for at least, it's, it's in the 20s, but I say to patients 30 so that they will hold for that long. <laughs> I say it to myself too. Um, if we don't hold for that long, we, we see that we actually don't have any, any identifiable change in the tissue or the fascia. You know, it just feels good for a second, but we're not really changing the baseline. So if you're going to do it, do it for 30. And I would say do it a few times during the day, you know? So that's, that's number one. I love that one. Number two is, and I'll show you again from a profile, um, we tend to slowly get here. So if you see the back of my neck here, I'm exaggerating here, but what starts to happen is the flexion forces will pull at our cervical spine and pull us forward. So one thing I like to bring, not, uh, it, it's not just talking about the shoulders when I'm talking to patients, but talking about where the chin is. So if I retract my chin, now it's not my mandible, I'm not moving my jaw. I'm just taking the back of my head and, and feeling like I'm pulling it backwards, almost giving myself a double chin kind of feel. That puts our neck in proper um, alignment with the, the rest of our spine. And that actually decreases a lot of load. So I talk about, and so what it also does is it activates our deep neck flexors. So it decreases, yes, exactly. So decreases flexion load on the spine. It increases activation on our deep neck flexors. And it's something that I do with, when I'm talking about ergonomics with dentists I treat or uh, stationary um, accountants that I treat or even, you know, parents that I see that are working with their children on the computer. And that one's a really helpful one for pain. Simple, but helpful. And then the last one I like is a simple stretch overhead. So I'll, I'll see if I can get in a position where you can see me a little bit better. So what I like to do is just you basically take your arms. So you make sure your shoulders aren't up. Again, they're retracted down. And what you want to do is you just want to reach up with your arms and you want to feel an extension happen. I want you to think about the extension through your um, thorax, your thoracic spine through your chest. So I don't want you to jar your low back. That's a really important distinction. We don't want extra extension force in your low back, but just that little bit of extension pressure in the upper back. Often I'll feel some some clicks and pops, some cavitations in my own spine. And it's really, yes, it's really actually helpful. What that does is it really takes that forward flexion um, 
force that's happening in our lumbar spine as we're sitting that we don't even recognize, as well as our cervical spine, it's really just giving it some counter stretch and counter pressure. And with really help look look up with the head or just like a little gaze up? A little gaze up. Whenever you're moving the head, it's always nice to think about it in relation to the rest of your spine. So you don't want it jarred like this, but if my spine is extending from here, then I can be gazing up from my cervical spine a little bit. That makes sense, being tall and extended. <laughs> so that's, that's the three. I, I thought that those three areas would be the, the best use of me for our, for our live uh, <laughs> little chat. But I'm happy to expand more at any point if anybody has any questions whatsoever. So, um, and I, I believe I can uh, give some resources to you that they could, where they could find our website for our practice, or they could find me via email or via social media. So anybody that has any questions regarding any of this or, or, or anything else, they, they're, I'm, I'm very happy for them to reach out. Well, this is wonderful, Danielle. It's almost like what people needed at the beginning of the pandemic, or maybe we know it's like this toolkit. It's like, okay, get yourself ready. You're going to yeah. have different obstacles being at home, you yeah. know, and these are kind of the new workplace injuries. I don't know in the chiropractor field, do you have terms for them now? Like this COVID lockdown, like aches and pains? Yeah. You know what? Good question. i I don't know if they're official, but certainly amongst ourselves, we talk about that. <laughs> you know, we're like pandemic issues and pandemic. It, pandemic is a word that we're throwing around left, right, and center right now. So <laughs> certainly, this is something that uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting thing to reflect on this time. You know, with, in all of our fields, uh, once we get once we get through it, you know, <laughs> uh, some of the changes that we've seen, really, really fantastic. Like making history that's for sure so but we'll see see if this will help i hope it will you know i'm sure it will it's wonderful thanks so much danielle so i'll be sure to share this with everyone with all of your details and the infographics and uh, how they can reach you and just tell us again so where uh, is your center open right now yes our clinic is open um so we're considered essential workers here in bermuda the chiropractic doctors so we're open through the stay at home uh, our first stay at home order, we were open for emergencies only, but this time around we're open for regular patient care. So we're seeing patients all the way through uh, and our practice is located here in Bermuda. It's in Hamilton, so it's downtown Bermuda and uh, it's 31 Victoria Street. So it's on Victoria Street uh, and I can give you all of that information for later as well. It's really easy to find uh, with the website as well. So I can give you that for anybody who's interested. And that's Advanced Chiropractic Wellness Center. That's it. That's us. Yeah. Well, thank you, Danielle. It's been wonderful to see you. And we must confess that Danielle and I are both CrossFitters. So yeah. uh, <laughs> we are, this is uh, how we met. And it's so wonderful to be able to share a little bit more for you all on health and wellness. And uh, we'll leave you with that today. So everyone just wishing you blessings of joy, love, and bliss from Bermuda. Take care. Bye for now. Bye. Thanks, Danielle.